I got a voicemail yesterday that said, when you get home, there'll be a box waiting for you. Fire up the camera, open the box, read the note. So, almost forgot to do the box part. So, I opened it. I didn't go any further than this. And there is a note that reads, you are a good dad. <clears throat> Dear white bone guy, I am your biggest fan. I watch all your videos more than once. Being a skull guy myself, don't know how hard it was to send this to you, but I think you would appreciate it more than anyone. So, even though you will always be the guy, <coughs> excuse me, that makes fantastic hunting videos to me, there are a bunch of goobers out there who just want to watch you clean skulls. Weird looking skulls. So here you go, weird looking skull, have fun. Keep up the great work. You are my hero. That's all. Yours truly, the Arizona Coos Hunter. <clears throat> I will one day tell you the backstory on how I met this individual. And uh, I don't think I've ever been nervous opening a box. My wife is always nervous when I get a package. Looky there. Lakota Monday. <laughs> Coos monkey. Thank you, Arizona Coos hunter. From everybody that watches. It just dawned on me. It's not a surprise if I put the critter in the description. Let's pretend like you didn't read it, and I'm gonna unveil this mystery critter. What's under the mystery bucket? Coos monkey. Man, it's a, it's a good day when you get a new critter. It's gonna rain the next couple days, so I wanted to get started on this because I don't want to just do the skull. I want to skin the whole thing and we'll do a little uh, critter skin in 101. The backstory on this animal is that it was roadkill. The majority of her guts came out of her tail end. So instead of just leaving it on the road and letting it go to waste, I think we can all learn from it and use it as an example. So if you're gonna get all mad because I'm skinning a dead critter, get over it. It could have been you that hit it. That's not the point here. The point is, let's respect this animal for what it is by utilizing the hide, the skull, and all the little pieces that go with. Always start at the vent. There's normally a color change in the hair. You can see dark hair here meeting light hair. So start right in his, her. Come right up through the hair. And then ride out to the pad of the foot. And just put your fingers between the meat and the hide and pull. Anywhere you have an area that's got a little tight place, you can cut that. Hoo wee! Guess what? It stinks inside. So I gotta speed this one up just a little bit because this animal had been run over by a vehicle there was a lot more damage inside than I had expected. So I speed up and I cut a few things out. Please note this one gets extremely graphic. That tire went right over the rib cage of that animal and it gets much worse as we move along. 
So when you skin up to the base of the pad, all you're gonna do is delicately cut and pull, cut and pull until you're right up against the end of those toes. Then you're just gonna take a pair of dykes or a heavy duty scissor and just cut the end of those digits off. Then you have a perfectly intact foot and then just keep moving up the line where you're pulling and tugging, pulling and tugging to where you can get your hand between his back and his tail. Here we're gonna do a very similar thing that we did with the foot. We're gonna pull, cut, pull, cut until we can get the tail stripper around the tail. And then we're just gonna grab the base of the tail and the tail stripper and just pull and that hide will come right off that tail and you are good to go. I don't mean to short change it on the skin and part, but this took a very long time, so I had to speed it up. So just pull and cut where the hide meets the meat and just pull, pull, pull. You can pull the arms out, do the same thing with the front feet that you did with the back feet, get all the way up to the head. This is the part that most people are concerned about. and nobody heard that. When we get around the head, it's the same exact principles as the rest of the body. You're just gonna pull tight and cut that webbing between the meat and the hide. The only difference is with the head, you make a deep cut near the ears so you can get the entire ear out, and then you make a deep cut near the eye so you don't lose any of the lid and the lash. A lot of this will just take some getting used to. You can actually push with your fingers and feel where there's cushion for the ear or put your thumb in and around where you can feel the indentation of the eye socket and just make a deep cut. This is the one place I encourage you to take too much material and trim it off later. But just cut, cut, cut all the way around the nose and it'll pull right off beautifully. This is also a skull cleaning video, so we're gonna remove the head from the spine. I normally push the head back and cut up from the bottom jaw till it stops, and then take your knife and cut from the back of the head down, and then just a big twist, it should come right off there. Expected. I knew it had got run over, but I didn't realize the damage that it had done internally, so it was uh, not easy. So now you just go back through and invert everything. The texture is not foxy, it's, it's a little more wiry, and it was very, very fatty. I was surprised how fatty it was, and the striping on the tail is almost ringtail. At this point, you get it cold or frozen or salted. Don't salt anything if you have not fleshed it. And if you're going to put it in the freezer, don't salt it. Salting is a preservative for outside the freezer. If you're just going to save it like this, put it hide in and then roll it. Ziploc, or it's ready to rock. It's a crazy rainy day, but I've got to get this coat of Monday done. I've got a pig in the pot right now. So I just pulled it out of the freezer. And I set the bag in the boiling water, almost boiling water, to kind of thaw it. Um, but I'm going to do the head 
I'm going to try and do the tail. So, here's your first glimpse. When, we're, uh, when you see it next, it should be done. All right, here's how we do. I'm going to put that skull in a strainer, set it right into the boil. In that pot, I've got clear water and a couple tablespoons of OxyClean. Then I'm going to change the jet on the power washer from the red nozzle to the white fan so I don't damage the skull. When the water hits a full rolling boil, I turn it down to a simmer. I wait and watch until the skin on the top of the nose splits. Then I pull it out and wash everything I can. Every hole, every orifice. It's all got to come clean. This is what a skull looks like right out of the initial boil. There are still some little pieces and parts stuck in and around the back of the head, little pieces of brain, some nasal cavity. That's all fine. I don't want to beat up a skull too much in the original boil. I'd rather put it in the peroxide mix, which I will show next. 50% peroxide, 40% by volume and 50% water, and that will help break down that real hard to clean stuff super easy without damaging the skull. I'm just gonna bring it to a boil, shut her down, and wash it off. Now I'm just going to wash up that tail. It's been laying in the bottom of the pot. I'm just going to take it out, wash it clean. I've never done one, so I'm not sure what I'm getting here. I find that once I get it clean, I break it apart and I'm going to soak it in the peroxide. And then I think I might drill it and put a piece of lime through it, but cleaned up rather nice, kind of neat looking. Check it out, y'all. Cotamundi Finito. This is one cool little animal, man. I uh, 
to me it looks very foxy looks very much like a little fox um, I've glued the bottom jaw in place where the jaw hinges there's a perfect little groove there I always put a little dab of glue there and glue the bottom jaws together on all small game as a rule that way if somebody picks it up it's all complete you don't break the bottom jaw quite a few questions about what glue I use I always always use the super glue blue top is that completely out of focus let's get you in focus huh what do you say blue top super glue nope I'm not sponsored by it I cannot be sponsored that is the glue I use I never like anything that dries in white white will turn yellow no whites always clear so I've glued it together and I'm gonna leave this skull as is with no mop and glow probably give it two weeks like this to see if it colors up anywhere foxes are really notorious for oiling up right here in the jaw area right there on the jaw and right there on the top of the nose so I'm gonna leave it as is it's beautiful right now uh, I only did it a couple hours ago so I think it's still drying it will probably continue to whiten or lighten just a little bit I'll take a few close-up pictures so you can take a look at it but it's really 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 unique cool little skull I want to thank Arizona Coos Deer Hunter for sending it to me this is a very very nice gesture and um, that's it thank you guys very much for watching hopefully this helped oh on the tail piece I got it all done there's about 23 little joints in that tail and they are definitely too small for me to drill so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it I may glue it together but it'd be this brittle piece I may just collect all those bones throw it in a mason jar and put it back here until I got time to deal with it but thanks again for watching Code of Monday. <laughs>